Good morning, folks. So it's Sunday morning. Uh, hopefully uh, we'll get on well today. We've got lots to, to do today. There'll be a service a little bit later. Uh, hopefully you'll join me for that. And uh, we've reached the end of what we're actually going to read in the Gospel of Matthew uh, by way of a little bit of encouragement with our Bible reading challenge. We're looking at Matthew chapter 14 today, the first of those Gospels, the first book in the New Testament of the Bible, chapter 14, because when we first started this at the start of lockdown, we started at chapter 15 of Matthew. That's where we reached in our daily readings. We've kind of gone back over a little bit of it. So tomorrow I'll hopefully pick up some of the themes that we've read in Matthew, certainly this section of it. Uh, but for today, let's let's read the last of the, those chapters and see what we make of it. And it's a very appropriate passage, at least I feel, in so much as it uh, gives us some questions about our faith and, and, and how strong our faith is, what our faith um, will permit us to do, help us to do. Let's just see without any further ado what uh, we might find there in Matthew chapter 14, uh, reading from the beginning. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard about the fame of Jesus. And he said to his servants, this is John the Baptist. He's been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. The Herod had seized John and bound him and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. Because John had been saying to him, it's not lawful for you to have her. And though he wanted to put him to death, he feared the people because they held him to be a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced before the company and pleased Herod, so that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might ask. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me the head of John the Baptist here on a platter. And the king was sorry, but because of his oaths and his guests, he commanded it to be given. He sent and had John beheaded in the prison, and his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, and she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took the body and buried it, and they went and told Jesus. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he heard a, or rather saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish and he said bring them to me bring them here to me then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass and taking the five loaves and the two fish he looked up to heaven and said a blessing then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds and they all ate and were satisfied and they took up 12 baskets full of the broken pieces left over those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. That would roughly be between three o'clock and six o'clock in the morning, incidentally. He came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter, Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you... Command me to come to you on, on the water. And he said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. And when they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognised him, they sent around to all that region and brought to him all who were sick and implored him that they, that they might only touch the fringe of his garment. 
and as many as touched it were made well. Amen. Do you see some can contrasts here as we read through this in the different expressions of faith that we see there? Right at the very end, having re-entered this area of Genesaret or the Gadarenes or the Decapolis, the whole region there, people recognised him because he'd been there before. And in faith, they ran out and brought their sick to him to, to be healed because they anticipated that he'd be able to do something about it. That was one expression of faith. Whether they followed him is another matter entirely. Uh, but we have other examples here as well. We have examples of the disciples not knowing how to feed the multitude. And again, Jesus says, well, bring, bring the food to me, bring the people to me, and we'll feed them. And he fed them. But last but not least, and this is the example I really do want us to pick up on here, um, is that of Peter. The disciples have been rowing all night. They're against the wind. They're exhausted. It's after three o'clock in the morning, after staying up all night and having had a busy day the day before. And in the middle of that storm, then Jesus appears and they think they're seeing a ghost. They're disturbed. They're scared. And yet Jesus implores them that it's him. And Peter's reply, impetuous as Edwin might say, is, if it really is you, tell me to come to you and I'll come. And so Jesus does. He puts his faith to the test. And Peter similarly puts his faith to the test. He gets out of the boat onto the water. And before you know it, he's there, but he takes his eye off of Christ and he starts sinking. Then his eyes back on Christ, save me. And, and Jesus reaches out his hand. Is there something in this for our experience today? Throughout our lives, perhaps we've seen this kind of experience. Are there things here that are of use to us when we think about the way we've lived our lives and the way that we've um, particularly shown our life of faith? Have there been occasions when we've quite literally had to get out of the boat and take that leap of faith, trusting and hoping that, that God's going to be there for us? Have we sometimes taken our eye off of Christ? And maybe the consequence of that is we've felt like we're sinking. Have we called out in desperation, save me, help me? And he's been there for us. And maybe not in the way that we anticipated. There are lots of, of parts of our experience, perhaps, where we can perhaps see some similarities to, to what Peter was experiencing in that short uh, episode that we've read of to, to today. And so I'd like you, if, if you'd like, and, and certainly I'll inter- endeavour to do this as well today, as we think about our faith, as we think about those things that are meaningful for encouraging our faith, our church attendance, in this case online, obviously, at the minute, um, our opportunities to read scripture, opportunities to pray, opportunities to strengthen ourselves and strengthen our faith in, in a spiritual way. Do we, particularly on a Sunday perhaps, take that opportunity, not just making it just a habit, but making it a good habit, but not just a habit, but something we do think about and also make use of at other times of the week as well, in all of our experience in life, learning from it and being strengthened by it as well. As much we can do, Big, the big question in, in my mind for myself as much as anybody else is, have I squandered a lot of opportunities where I could have met with Christ, been strengthened by him um, and, and grown in faith? I think the answer to that, unfortunately, is yes. I have squandered many opportunities. But the question for today is, will we squander the opportunities we have today? Each day, day by day by day. I'll leave you with that thought, but let's have a wee word of prayer and bring these thoughts before God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us faith. It's a gift from you and one which we need to exercise. We pray that we would be enabled to exercise it. Perhaps initially it's as if we need the stabilizers on our bike just to, to keep us upright. We need assistance to, to enable us to get on. And we pray that you would give us that assistance as we need it. But there does come a time in life when we move on to more mature things and when we need to be able to, to ride, but, but never ride alone because you're there accompanying us on all our journeys of life. We fail you at times. We take our eyes off of Christ. Our faith wavers at times. But you always seem to be there when we need you. And we pray you would continue to be so. We pray that um, our faith would endure and that you would help us to strengthen it in, in all the various means that you've supplied to us to be encouraged, not just individually, but, but together, corporately, as a, a community of your people, 
as small communities in congregations and house groups, but also in that larger sense as well of the church, wherever she's to be found, the children of God, wherever they are to be found in heaven and on earth. So be with us this day, we pray, and help us to, to never lose sight of Christ, uh, never to miss our opportunities and to redouble our resolve to, to get everything we possibly can out of the opportunities you give us to grow in faith and to grow into understanding and to, uh, to grow in love of you, our God. Help us through Christ, we pray. Amen. I hope that you will continue on with us for worship a little bit later today or wherever it is you might be worshipping today. There are lots of opportunities uh, in this day and age, obviously. Um, and also that you'll you'll join us to pick up some of those themes of Matthew and then moving on to a quite challenging book, the book of Revelation, that we're going to look at next. But until the next time, God bless. Take care. Please don't squander your opportunities. Please make good use of them. Grab hold of them and, and use them to the full and uh, get the best out of all you possibly have. I wish you the best. Every blessing. Take care. Bye for now.